Hello everyone, uh, I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And we're here today to do Shonen Archive. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire beings to watching every single Shonen Jump anime from the 1950s all the way till one of us goes and we can't watch Shonen anime anymore. <laughs> <laughs> And any of them that are available to us in English that, is, that are easy enough for us to find. And we plan to do this until one of us goes and the show ends at that point. And then they are declared the winner. They are declared the <laughs> ultimate Shonen fan. The, uh, the true Shonen reader. Yep, the true Shonen reader. Uh, the main series we talk about is Gintama, with the other two being Jujutsu Kaisen, which is current go through season two. And Kuroko's basketball, and we're a little bit behind because I had to, I was going to Vegas for vacation. <laughs> so now we're picking up where we left off, and we're going to be talking about Gintama today. Yay! Zen, you watched these episodes a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. Um, it, it's been a minute. I, it's probably fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it'll be fun. Like a month. The, I, I, I think I think they're fairly rememberable, so we'll be able to maybe, talk. Maybe about you it. do the the summaries so that I <laughs> I don't have to battle through my memory banks. But once you start talking about it, I'm, I will remember them all perfectly clearly. Okay, so let's get right into that. We'll start with episode one forty seven, which is Gintama episode one forty seven, titled. All adults are in structures for all children, and this takes place right after the uh, Yoshiwara and Flames arc, which we thought that we had actually talked about it, but it, it actually turned out we talked about it in reference to Jujutsu Kaisen, because there was a training arc in there, and I think we brought it up there, and it made us feel like we had already covered <laughs> the episode. We just used the shit out of ourselves. <laughs> it mm. Okay. Uh, Shin, so the episode goes like this, uh, Shinpachi is f- practicing a sword at his dojo, and he's visited by his sister, um, she's worried about his practicing, um, and so he's worried that he's, like, keeping her awake with how much he's been practicing, she says, don't worry about it, and he continues to practice, but he has, like, puts more effort into it. Um, they flash back from when the fight with Ab- uh, Abuto happened, and Shinpachi wants to go stronger. Uh, Kagura, at, at elsewhere, is uh, running down a river path, and she's also feeling really bad about how the fight went down specifically, about how, um, how it all went down, and she wants to become stronger. And then the following day, they both talk to Gintoki about wanting to start a training arc, um... And the reason is is that they've been fighting more and more strong people, so they themselves need to get stronger, and the best way to do that is to have a training arc. And then Kentucky says, like, eh, we don't need it. And <laughs> Kagura and Shibachi are both like, no, we should have a training arc. And I think um, what Kentucky ends up doing is that he does a narration to make three months go by. Uh, but only three seconds have passed, so he's trying to make it seem like a lot of time has passed <laughs> in a short amount of time. Um, and the, basically, he does not want to train them at all, so they decide that, um, uh, they try to inspire him by saying about, hey, you should live by the three principles of jump, and that still is not enough. So not even Shonen Jump is enough to get, get Toki into training arcs. I think his actual reasoning is is that training arcs are boring in manga. <laughs> and that they're never any fun. So Gintoki tells him that they should go figure out their own training stuff. Um, Kagura starts talking about uh, her own uh, uh, training arc of what she's going to plan to do. It involves a mountain, finding a bear... And then the bear will help her do sit-ups. Um, Kintoki says that's crazy. That's never going to work. Um, and then she switches the role so she helps the bear do sit-ups instead. And she's an instructor instead. And then th- th- she thinks that this is going to be a great plan for training. It doesn't work out. Ote shows up and offers to help train them. Um, she asks them to write down how they want to become stronger on a blank piece of paper. Kintoki writes on the paper that he wants to have straighter hair. Kagura draws a bear <laughs> with uh, blood coming out of its claws and dripping out of its mouth. Um, both of their goals completely flabbergast Shinpachi. Um, 
and he asked her about her opinion, and then Ote then shows a note. Um, Ote then notes that it's crucial to have goals that are reachable, or else why even have one? Her goal is to become a winged angel and lead to a bloody gym structure to Nirvana, so that is her plan for it. Uh, then Hasegawa shows up, and he starts complaining about the drawing lessons that won't make them stronger. Uh, he reveals that his he's been drawing a whole bunch of buildings in flames, and he goes into lecturing the two about experience. Um... His advice is also not very good. He It seems like he's trying to give more advice about actually drawing is what I think I can remember. Um, and then he starts telling a story about a dirty and a clean person. The clean person always sits down when he pees to avoid making a mess. A dirty person stands up not caring about making the mess. Uh, because of this, the clean person's legs become thinner and thinner as the years go by. Vice versa happened to the other person. Because of this slight difference, the dirty person wins against the clean person... When he was kicked out the legs in the Battle of Sikigahara, um, which I think is another joke reference to, I think, Nobunaga Age, but I'm not 100% sure because it's been a very long time since we, I saw this one. Um, Shibachi says that's a very stupid story and it's a very weird case to how did your legs could be stronger. Um... It is about this, because it's about Iyasu. So Iyasu finds a secret form of training from a monk known as the Tenkai. However, his true identity was really his fitness instructor, instructor and Shipachi snaps at him. And then that's when Katsura comes in, and then Katsura tries to train them. Um, he tries to give him... He also gives him a picture, which is like a picture of a ruined city. Um, he says training physically is not good enough. You need to kind of find yourself. Um... Show both and Shimpachi and Kagura are like, oh, that's actually a really good idea. So then Katra starts telling the tale of a man who lived his life in diligence until a series of small events that changed his lifestyle dramatically so he could find his true self. Um, and then it ends up being, again, the bear joke. Uh, Kagura is really into this idea of a bear killing people, but Shimpachi is not. Um, so then Katra says, I'll train you guys in the way of the samurai. Um, <laughs> his way of the samurai is to do Dragon Ball, <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he gives them the heavy turtle shells that Master Hoshi gives to, um, uh, Krillin and Goku, and then he tells them to go find a rock with a name, with his name on it, uh, and they both attack him for plagiarizing what is clearly what Master Roshi did, um... And then he revealed, and then he says, like, no, that's not true. Me and Kentoki did the same thing when we were training. And then Kentoki says, like, yeah, but instead of turtle shells, they were actually instructors. Instructors, And then actual instructors come out and say, like, <laughs> actual instructor dudes come out and he goes, like, okay, we're going to throw the instructor and the one who can find him the fastest is the one who can actually become strongest. And then finally, Kagura and Shimpachi are both like, all right, this is stupid. Um, we're done with all of the shenanigans, we're leaving, and we're going to do our training our own to become stronger. And as they leave, Gintoki and everyone else basically congratulate themselves because they've passed this test. What they realize is the first thing you need to do to get stronger in training is that you have to figure out a way to do it yourself. And, um, you are your own instructor, and that's the way it ends. And it ends with all of them kind of sitting in a powwow, like, really patting themselves on the back and being like, ah, yes, we did it. We finally told them that what they needed to do was stop asking us and do it themselves. <laughs> and that was episode 147. Uh, Zen, if you can remember how you feel about this episode, how do you feel about it? Uh, it's fine. It, this is definitely one of those episodes where they're like, we need to put something on the page <laughs> because we, <laughs> there's nothing to do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was pretty funny. I really like when Otai is like, it's important to have a really obtainable goal. And then her goal is like a fucking Michelangelo painting of like <laughs> an angel ascending into heaven and stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, that's really good. Um, Katsura is, is really good uh, I like the, the turtle shell Dragon Ball gag but ultimately it was just one of those episodes that just kind of exists yeah it really does feel like okay there were some stuff that they need to do like aftermath for the previous arc with how heavy it was 
So this was a good way of saying like, well, here's one of the things that wasn't fully addressed is that both of these people want to get stronger. So I like that they actually addressed it as opposed to just being like, oh yeah, they, they just don't do that, which sometimes because Gintama is mostly comedy focused and they actually make fun of this in a later episode when uh, Shinpachi mentions that his main goal was always to inherit his uh, father's dojo and then Kagura says, don't worry, nobody realizes that you haven't really brought that up <laughs> since the first <laughs> couple episodes. Um, it's nice for them to be consistent and be like, no, they are actually training and they'll figure it out on their own and there won't be like an extensive training arc where they're doing it themselves. So, um, I also liked all of Gintoki's kind of breakdown about how training arcs don't really work <laughs> in shonen manga and they're his least favorite parts of anything. Which that feels at this point, that's actually the author chiming in and saying, like, as someone who really likes Jump, I'm not a big fan of training arcs. And it actually reminded me, like, yeah, they can kind of be a little bit of hit or miss. Uh, for every one where I can think of, like, oh, yeah, that's really good. Like, obviously, I really am a big fan of the Kid Goku and the Krillin stuff with Master Roshi. There's something like um, My Hero, where they have to show what every single character has been doing individually and it makes you go like, why am I watching any of this? <laughs> this <laughs> this is excruciating. Please stop. I don't want any more. Um, so I thought it was a very fun way of doing like a, a training arc without actually doing a training arc. Um, a, a lot of shows and a lot of things will make fun of something and then immediately do it. And then it kind of defeats the purpose. But at least in this one, it feels like, okay, no, we're not actually going to have one. They're going to go train off off screen and then they'll be stronger for when the next big arc stuff happens and it'll be fine so yeah i thought it was perfectly fine i think it's probably the weakest of these four it's the one i remembered bits and parts of it mainly because i'm a dragon ball fan so of course i'm going to remember the the roshi bit uh but i think the others are much stronger and funnier uh for, with what they're doing <laughs> But you know, yeah, this fun. this one was just one of those ones where it just felt like they were making some quick bits. But the next one is like structured, funny jokes, which Gintama is better at, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. When they're not just like, "Hey, remember Dragon Ball?" You know? Yeah. Not Even to though... call this a Family Guy episode, but it it had those vibes from time to time. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that you know, to be fair, yes, it it it, it can feel a little bit like that. They didn't go full on full hog with it, but it definitely was referential to it. Uh, but as we know, as from previous episodes, uh, if you're the closer you are to Dragon Ball, the better your series is. So <laughs> if you want also success true. in this industry. <laughs> Not untrue. <laughs> Not untrue. So that was episode 147. Next, let's go on to episode 148, which is the start of the Shinsengumi Death Game arc, which is an entire parody of Saw. <laughs> uh, the title of this episode is Zip Up Your Fly Nice and Slowly. Uh, and here's how the plot goes. Hijikata awakens in a locker room that is dark and musty, and there is something, a collar tied around his neck with a long chain attached to it. Um, Okita kind of signals him, and he reveals that he has the same chain to him. And that's when someone, they realize someone ambushed both of them, and they had to have put them in this kind of like containment place. Uh, the person in question ends up being uh, someone who shows up on the screen, and he reveals himself as Jigsaw, which makes me really curious if you can't copyright Jigsaw, because that's literally just what the bad guy from Saw is named. It's Jigsaw. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a silly referential name. It's just what it's just what they say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I guess I guess it's like enough in parody realm. That it's yeah, like... I I would think so too. One moment, I'll be right back. I just realized something. Uh, all right, we're back. Uh, the, 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 the other TV was on and the Family Feud started playing, so I was a little bit afraid that Steve Harvey was going to come onto the screen. <laughs> come onto the screen. <laughs> so if you heard anything Steve Harvey-ish in the first 13 minutes, that's where it came from. <laughs> it should be gone now. <laughs> if you had uh, Steve Harvey vibes <laughs> earlier on in the... <laughs> yeah, if you're like going like, is that Steve Harvey? I can kind of hear it. Sometimes when you hear from my side of the audio, it's a lot of, like, my chair going back and forth or the clicking of a mouse as I'm, like, looking through the summary of it. But maybe this time you'll hear Steve Harvey. <laughs> but all right. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, Jigsaw. You, would, I guess, is just not copyright protected. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? 
Uh, it, I feel like the name of the character you is, could probably use if it's an obvious parody. Like, but then again, maybe not because like they don't they can't say Goku, can they? They always mm-hmm. like vaguely allude to it being Goku, but they're never like, oh, you mean Son Goku? Like anything yeah. like that. They always kind of vaguely just say it. Like even all the um, uh, Gundam parodies they're exactly like them but they're slight parodies of them to avoid saying like oh it is actually them but for jigsaw they're just like nah it is jigsaw but to be fair i think the same thing is kind of true for the scream killer because the scream killer i think is generic ghost face um i think you can just have ghost face in anything and it's fine <laughs> I think he's a generic enough villain or something that you could just have. It's I've never looked into horror movie uh, copyright. It must be fascinating. Like I know that um, in the original story of Dracula, it's it, it, there's a difference between having Dracula and then having Vlad the Impaler, who was called Dracula. There's two distinct different characters, <laughs> which is why back in the day we had Count Orloff before we had Dracula because they're like, well. Uh can't really have him but we can have him without calling him that <laughs> and here you go and that's how they yeah got i mean i guess that. that makes sense Ish. yeah nosferatu Ish. and stuff like that so uh something the deeper look into but either way jigsaw is here he doesn't look like jigsaw he's not billy the puppet um which is funny now that i actually think about it, the main talk piece for jigsaw is billy the puppet and it's not actually jigsaw <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that yeah, is how well, they get uh, away with it. Um, but the, you know, he the the guy shows up on the TV says in seventy two hours, um, I plan to blow up all the Shinsengumi, and I've also rigged your specific collars so that if you one of them opens, it will cause the other one to explode. So only one of you is going to be able to get out of here, and you need to fetch the key. And so, yeah, that's the the saw situation that that they're in in here. And you can find the key. It's located at the end of the passage. And as they try and go through the passage, the also like the chains pull them back and stuff like that. It's a classic kind of saw get up, but a very cheap one <laughs> compared to how elaborate a lot of the saw. Actually, for saw one, it's pretty on par. But it's not nothing compared to like the giant juicer that's in like saw seven. <laughs> Where it's a giant. Yeah, no, it's, it's not the pit of uh, syringes. It's yeah, just... yeah, it's nothing like that. It's not any of the crazier no. later <laughs> Saw two and onwards where they started getting more of a budget. Uh, it very much makes sense with Saw one. But anyway, uh, they both try to reach the key and they <laughs> fight each other for a bit. Um, uh, Jigsaw's kind of enjoying watching it. He says he's a fan of the Shinsengumi, but he also feels like they're kind of lost their way in some way. Um, at least that's the reason why he's saying that he's doing this. And then I think at some point he starts arguing with his mom, who is in the background, and then he leaves. Um, Hijikata tries to get the key. Um, uh, they struggle for a bit. Okita tries to like use reason and kind of stop their tensioning. They talk it out, and Akita claims that he just needs to take a... Uh, he needs to pee. So Hijikata does the same thing. And then... Both of them are, like, doing, a like, a Death Note style... I don't know if it's both... I think it might just be Hijikata, where Hijikata's, like, super overthinking the pissing. It's just Hijikata, yeah. He's, like... He, yeah, he's having a full-on light Yagami, like... But if I if I do this, he'll think I'm Kira. But if I if he thinks I'm gonna do this, then I don't do this. He'll also think I'm Kira. Yeah. So he keeps like peeing for an extremely long time, but he doesn't actually need to pee. <laughs> and then when he finally finishes, he's like, "Oh, did you finish?" He's like, "Yeah, I was just dribbling it out." And then he's like, "Then they show what he was dribbling it out. And it's like three sloshes of blood." <laughs> It's like, dribbling out what? (laughs) What were you doing that entire time? Because this scene lasts an extremely long time. I want to say it's almost half of the episode's (laughs) run length. Yeah, it's super long. It's really good, though. It is really (laughs) good. It's super funny. Um, Then they both wake up, and uh, he starts, Jigsaw starts saying, like, hey, what's up? He goes into a giant, like, tirade until his mom shows up and he gets him to stop. Um, they want to try and break the chain that binds them, so they start like hitting it with like a rock. 
Uh, and while they're doing this, <laughs> they both have an inner monologues that reveal that they just want to, they're waiting for the opportunity to kill the other one, but they don't want to be the one to do the first move. So they'll only kill the other person when they go to betray them. Yeah, they they want to they want to do it in self defense. <laughs> they want to do it in self defense. Uh, so they are entering a stalemate <laughs> where neither one of them is attacking the other one because both of them are waiting for the other to betray them, and neither one plans to do it. And it's really funny because as they're making their plan, both of the voice actors start syncing up what they're saying at the exact same time, saying the exact same thing in their inner monologue. Uh, Hijikata says that, hey, maybe we should rest and take a break from breaking the chain. Um, they say, like, hey, Okita says, no, I can keep on going, but no, Hijikata says, no, we really do need to rest just so that we're, um, we don't have to try and catch the other one off guard. Uh, they decide to both go to sleep, but they both pretend to go to sleep. (laughs) And half a day passes and neither one of them has slept at all. And, um, uh, Jigsaw says, like, hey, good morning, I see you haven't betrayed one another, and Okita starts saying, like, I will never betray him, trying to make it seem like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm the virtuous one in this one, and then Hijikata follows up, saying, like, oh, yeah, nah, neither one of us is gonna be betraying the other, and we're gonna get out of here, and we're gonna solve this, and we're gonna save the Shinsengumi, uh... And that's when Jigsaw sends in uh, Kikazoya, which is something like in the background, and which was revealed in the next uh, episode what it ends up being. But he says like, "Oh yeah, we're not going to get that key because we don't need that key." He's like, "Well, if you don't need it, then I got something for you." And then like it plays like the super dramatic music for when like a heavy arc is playing as this thing enters the screen, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> It's the it's the music they use whenever there's like uh, a serious main arc villain shows up. They use it for this arc, which is pretty funny. The da 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 dun 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 that one they use it, and that's the end of episode one forty eight. Uh, what do you feel? What do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, it's good. It's good. Um, I really, <laughs> um, I find this whole arc really funny. I, I don't know if everyone thinks these early episodes are supposed to be funny, but I found even this one, like, really funny. The whole bit where they're pissing and he's having a whole fucking light breakdown is really good. Uh, I like the bits in the beginning also where they're trying to kill each other and they just, like, don't give a shit. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know what? We're we're friends, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really good, man. It's really good. It is. Um... I'm a really big fan of Saw, uh, so seeing that there's a seeing a Saw reference where I wasn't really expecting it in anime of all places because I was like, is Saw even popular in Japan? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, but I like the setup of it here. Um, there's a lot of good references to the movie itself in this one and in the second episode as well. Uh, this actual like chain thing i don't know when in 2009 i'm not sure if the witch saw movies had been released by then but this get up has actually been used in another similar um saw movie though i think in that one they the two people who were chained up by the neck one of them had um their eyes shut and then the other one had their mouth shut and they had to try and interact with each other when one of them couldn't talk and the other one couldn't see <laughs> Uh, it was a hell of a thing. So I like seeing this with Ichikata and uh, Okita. And in general, I like Hichikata and Okita. They end up being... Their relationship is really funny, and they kind of get into it a little bit more in the next episode. Because it's both really nuanced, and it also comes down to, I really fucking hate this guy. <laughs> they both can't stand <laughs> each other. Yeah, they just do not like each other at all. No, it is it is funny for a relationship to be one actually super deep and well-defined and also can so easily be boiled down to, I don't like you. <laughs> yeah, I really just fucking hate you. And the animosity here is really shown. And their reasoning that they both came to the same conclusion of, I, ha- I can't be the one to be the betrayed. I have to be the one that's being betrayed and then I'll kill him instantly. <laughs> I'll Stab him yeah, right I, don't, I don't want to be the <laughs> the one who does the betraying. Mm-hmm. It's really funny. Uh, it's really good. It's funny as hell. It is. It's an excellent setup. So let's go into the end setup for it. 
which is episode 149, which this one, uh, this is the title that I'm going to go with, but the title technically changes halfway in. The English title is When Breaking a Chubert in Half, the end with the knob should be better. It's also tasty to drink it from there. <laughs> Um, if you don't know what a Chubert is, uh, Chuberts are, I didn't know what the, those were, what they were called, but they're those ice cream things that are like two halves of it. I didn't know that they were called a Chubert. I didn't know. Yeah, they're like, uh, frozen, frozen ice thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it, once you see the design of it, it's like, oh yeah, I know what that is. I had that. I didn't know that those had a name. <laughs> I just called them those things. Anyway, following off from the previous episode. Uh, Jigsaw's pet dog enters the hallway, and he's prepared to take the key. He basically is very threatening, saying, and I think they call him something like, like, I think it's, like, Kikazoid, but it also feels like it's a pun on, like, a dog version of, of Jigsaw, like, Dog Saw or something like that. Um, he's gonna be the one to take the key, because he takes shiny things. Um, Hijikata tries to reason with the dog to kind of have it drop, um... The dog drops it, but instead it looks like he's going to take a heavy dump on it. So Hichikata immediately goes to grab the key away from the dog because he doesn't want to uh, go through shit to get to the key. Um, he's able to stop it, but then that immediately is what Okita's been looking for this entire time. And he immediately is, is ready to <laughs> accuse Hichikata of being a traitor to the Shinsengumi. And he's getting ready to pull the chain back to him to kill him. Uh, but Hijikata at the last second throws the key out the barred window and says like, oh, I'm putting it in a safer place. But he very clearly just like, just throws it <laughs> clear out the window in in a hasty uh, kind of way. Uh, so both of them are now for, kind of chuck, uh, stuck without a way to get out. Three days passed and both Hijikata and... Oh, one moment. <coughs> 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 Sorry, I had to sneeze. Bless you. Thank you, thank you. I tried to mute the mic, but I could not make it in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, three days have passed, and both uh, Hijikata and Okita are extremely dehydrated and emaciated. Uh, Jigsaw appears on the screen, and he's enjoying a Chubert, and he's like uh, eating it in a very assholeish way. He's eating it from the from the end up part of it, and Hijikata is saying like, "Look at him. He's not even pretending to put on the mask anymore." <laughs> He's not even pretending to be mysterious. He's just drinking in front of us. Um, he reminds them that, hey, that your HQ is going to be fucked because I'm going to blow it up. And in a show of amnesty, Jigsaw reveals that there's another key items behind the two lockers. Uh, Okita opens one of them and he sees a little fridge. And inside the fridge is a grape flavor Chubert. Um, and then they start arguing about how that they should... Uh, <laughs> Which side of which side do you actually suck on from? So I think the way it goes is that Okita cuts it from the middle and goes from there, but Hijikata says that no, you're supposed to drink it from the top of the the little part right here because it's kind of like a nipple, and you're supposed to drink from it from there. And at this point, that's when he said like, okay, now that we've both established this, we need to change the title of the episode. And the episode title comes down, and it's slightly altered to make note of the thing he said. <laughs> um, and then they kind of start arguing. Um, <clears throat> uh, they both start to argue because they're like they don't know what side of the Chubert that they want. Um. Because obviously the one that has slightly more is the one with the nipple in part of it. So therefore there's more of the Chubert in there than it is in the other half. And they kind of argue about which side of the Chubert that they want. Um, they check back in the other uh, locker and it's a, uh, it's like a saw. But it's like a rusty saw. They try and use the saw to break the chain but it's not any use. Um, and so Okita kind of collapses and they talk briefly and it gets actually really serious. I am almost positive... They use the same song from when his sister died for the backing track of this. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that's really funny. I'm almost because he starts talking about like the life of him and Hijikata, and when he starts looking like he's gonna be fainting, um, he says like it's gonna be okay, and he breaks the other half of the Chubert. He says like here, eat the Chubert. You'll feel better after you eat it. And, it, and Okita starts having this soliloquy about like, look at you, Hijikata. 
you don't even realize that you wanted it so bad. You wanted the bigger part of the Chubert. And look at you. When it looks like I'm about to die, what do you do? You give me the bigger half of the Chubert. See, that's the difference between me and you, Hijikata. I would have just eaten the entire Chubert. But you, when the, t- when the lines are down, even though you want one thing, you try and give the person the what <laughs> You try and do the good thing at the end of the day. I can never do that. I can never be like that. And I can never be like you. I can never do this. And it's really funny because it's extremely, like, dramatic, this scene that's playing out between them as they talk about, like, we both know what the saw is for. He p- wants us to kill each other. And it's really funny that this entire, like, dramatic thing is going on. And they keep bringing up the Chubert <laughs> about how... It- <laughs> yeah, the whole time. It's like a... Because he's talking about, like, um, you know, I you're too nice to make it in this world. Like, you, if you had it in you, you know, you would have just eating the chubert and they just keep circling back to, <laughs> to the, the chubert um um so hijikata goes like no it's fine i don't need both any of the sides of the chubert you can have the entire chubert you're gonna be okay and um uh then okita decides that after they talk he's going to sacrifice himself and do the thing that he could never do in actuality, which is something he would never do because he's not built like Hijikata is. So he sacrifices himself in order to save Hijikata in HQ. Uh, and that's when Jigsaw starts uh, appears on the screen and starts taunting him, saying, like, well, now you have to actually cut off his head. And Hijikata instead goes into, like, a berserker fury and he's able to bust through the chains and destroy the pipe that the chains were tied to. And Jigsaw says something that's, like, was he able to... Um, <laughs> break the unbreakable through the the thing that we thought was not possible was he able to do he says it in a way that makes it seem like really funny to me for some reason because it makes it seem like is he breaking the bonds is he doing the impossible right before my eyes yes he is <laughs> oh my god um he escapes and he um he says that he can still feel kind of a pulse on okita so he's gonna try and get him to um to to safety maybe to a hospital or something but during his escape he falls into a pitfall and by the chain it's hanging um him and okita are connected um and he goes like oh no i have to do something because eventually okita's gonna be dragged down and he'll fall into the pit uh that's when okita reveals that he's actually been alive the entire time he gets up he unlocks his collar uh and he (laughs) he makes hijikata fall to his death And he goes back to the room with Jigsaw, and it's revealed that he has been working with Jigsaw the entire time, uh, colluding with each other for a plan to take down Hijikata, and at the end, Okita says that, you know what, I'm thinking of going after a wavy-haired samurai next. And that's where the episode ends. (laughs) Uh, I felt super smart when I was watching this episode, Mm because when Okita sacrifices himself, right, Mm -hmm. I was looking at it, and I was like, that doesn't look like blood. I don't think that's blood. So I called that being the Chubert almost immediately. Mm. Um, but what I didn't call was I was looking at it and I was like, okay, that's how they're going to trick the bad guy. <laughs> Is that they're going <laughs> to fake Okita being dead. And then Okita's going to be like, ha I used the Chubert. I did not call it being o- Okita's plot the whole time. <laughs> 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 it's it's really good because this is also a reference to the first Saw movie where the ending of Saw is like a big holy shit I did not see that coming at all <laughs> moment <laughs> so it was really well done when he re- when he goes back there and he's like oh man you were really good he's like it really felt natural he's like yeah I know man you- <laughs> we did it we did it so well it's funny because Jigsaw was having had this like like spooky accent on the entire time except for when he was yelling at his parents um, but with the second he's, like, with Okita, it's, like, his natural accent returns to him, and he just is a normal guy. Uh, really funny. This episode was really good. <laughs> I don't- Yeah, no, it's so fucking funny when he- when he takes that collar off and just lets Hijikata fall. Yeah, Hijikata has a face of, like, eh? And then he just yeah, falls. He just plummets. <laughs> <laughs> Really good. Um, all the bits with the Chubert, with how much the emphasis they put on it, was really funny. <laughs> the fucking Chubert was so good. The whole time when he's like, you couldn't, 
you don't have what it takes to live in this world because you won't eat the tuber. <laughs> you won't take the bigger part for yourself. <laughs> You'll always offer it to the person in need because that's the kind <laughs> of guy that you are. <laughs> Uh, 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 really uh, funny to have it when, when both of the voice actors are just doing the, they're like acting their ass off for this scene <laughs> it's amazing there's like no hint of like a jokes or anything as far as we're concerned Okita is dying and this is his like <laughs> the soliloquy before he goes <laughs> all centered around a Chubert yeah that's it's amazing it's, it's, a, it's a great payoff to the setup of the first episode the way that this one ends it feels right um, I think we end up seeing, I'm going to assume we end up seeing Hijikata. I don't know if they ever say, how did he get out of this situation? But I also have a feeling they're not going to explain it. I don't think they do. No, I think it just ends and they're like, well, <laughs> well, there we go. He just, uh, he just fell. He just fell. That's the end of Hijikata, everyone. He's not going to show up. Maybe they really did think that this was going to be the final season. <laughs> so they didn't feel the need <laughs> to explain it. <laughs> But yeah, really funny, really good. Just like everything all around it was fantastic. I'm almost positive they brought back the sisters' um, song for when he's looking like he's gonna die, and in which case, that's a really funny and fucked up way of bringing back that song. It's a really good way of doing it. Um, everything about it was amazing. Again, the further talking of Okita and... Hijikata's relationship, they really get to lay out in this very silly way the, all the nuances, nuances behind it in such a way that also feels that it's tied to a chew bird. <laughs> Great. Masterful stuff. <laughs> yeah, this really really good. This is my favorite kind of Gintama comedy where it's just like absurdly stupid, but also really good. Yes. Yes. I'm fine with all the shonen references and stuff, but like when Gintama just starts going absolutely insane <laughs> with just dumb shit, it kills me. It does, yeah. I think that's when it's at its best as well. And yeah, this was a fantastic fucking episode. It's such a shame we took such a long time to talk about it because it is really fucking good. <laughs> and yeah, oh, let's. God. that is the technically the final arc for this season as we get to the final episode of this season and as as they promised it in the entire episode what was supposed to be the final episode of of gintama in general it is episode 150 if you can't beat them join them uh okay so here's how we're gonna do so the the episode starts um which is really funny because if you watch the previous episode the previous episode setup is nothing like what this episode is actually going to be like so they say like it's going to be a mysterious man is going to be showing up and they're going to help they're going to help actually if you look at the crunchyroll explanation it actually says it because i was like actually laughing because like i can't believe even on the crunchyroll explanation for it they don't tell you what the episode is actually going to be about until you see it um uh, hopefully nothing gets... Uh... uh -oh. oh, okay. One second, it should be fine. I was fine. about to say, uh -oh, alarming sounds coming yeah. from the other side of the mic. <laughs> the Odd Jobs trio is going to uh, going about their usual meaningless chatter when a man with an eye patch suddenly shows up and begins ordering them around. The man's power is so strong, the Odd Jobs find themselves unable to defy his out orders. This episode has nothing to do with that. <laughs> absolutely no, nothing sure does not absolutely is that like nothing. a is that just a mistake no that's what it's supposed to uh, that's what it's supposed to be that that was what the the previous episode's title was supposed to be about it was supposed to be about this so hmm. when the episode starts and it's like all in black and white and it's like wait what's going on and they start talking about, like, this is actually the end, everybody. It's unfortunate. I know you've heard it. Uh, there was some problem with Sunrise. There's nothing we can do about it, but this is officially the end of Gintama as we know it. And it's like, wait, what? So this this is... Okay, wait one moment, because I actually have a, a work text that I need to very quickly address. <laughs> one moment. Pause! Uh, okay, we're back. So yeah, the the episode starts and it starts with them like in black and white looking through the old times of Gintama as Shinpachi 
Gintoki and Kagura come out in like black suits and like there's like a white title of of Gintama in the background. Um and they basically say like yeah, this this is the end, you know. Layoffs have been happening. All the stuff that's been going on in America. Like they name drop of a specific thing that happened in America that would cause like unwell. I think this is 2009 would this be around the time of the economic downturn? <laughs> When things were going bad, I can't remember too much from 2009 when it comes to this because I think uh, it was. That's a good question. I don't know. It it seems like it would be like, but it, either way, they're saying that's one of the excuses for it. So you know what? Uh, we're sorry, everyone, but this is going to be the final episode of of Gintama, and we're going to show you how we would have wanted season four to end it. So here, we're going to play it for you right now. Um. Uh, and so they show the final episode, which is them fighting against Takatsuji, and the name of the episode, then the name of the episode, which is going to be the name of the final episode of season four, is what they say it's going to be, is called All's Well That Ends Well, and it just shows that, and so we start All's Well That Ends Well, and in this one, um, Gintoki and, uh, Takatsuji, all of, of Tokyo is, I think, on fire, as everything's kind of like bursting down and it's all going bad and Takatsuji is talking to Gintoki and he says like, you know me, I'm someone, he, I will always keep destroying or something like that. And Gintoki's like, Takatsuji, and then they go for like a dramatic final like attack each other with swords, which is really funny because this is also very well animated. <laughs> this entire part actually kind of looked awesome <laughs> for what it actually kind of does look like what would be a potential final episode if you were to do a showdown between them. Both of us not knowing how the actual showdown would look like. It's like, okay, yeah, this kind of makes sense of what he would want. The burning of everything and everything kind of being destroyed. Um, so they rush towards each other and then we cut to commercial break. And when we come back to a commercial break, Kagura is running. And Kagura is running and says, well, that's all settled. And nobody can say that that wasn't settled. Because let me tell you, it was settled. <laughs> And she is running to uh, Shinpachi because um, he's going off somewhere and they're all wishing him goodbye, uh, saying, hey, hey um, we're going to see you off. And Kentoki's not there to see him off because he's going to be traveling to a faraway place, uh, probably to go hone his skills as a swordsman. And as he gets on the bus and he's leaving, um, they say, hey, I can't believe it. Kentoki really didn't show up. And that's when I think it's, uh, I don't remember who says it, but someone says like, oh wait, don't, don't underestimate him yet or something. And he's right there and he's on his little moped and he drives up to the bus and he says like, let me, Shinpachi, let me tell you these final words. I think you're, and then like a car bus goes by <laughs> and it completely cuts off what he's about to say. Let my final words to you are, and then a, a car comes by and it completely cuts him off and you don't hear any of it. And then Shinpachi goes like, Gintoki, I didn't hear a single word you just said. And they do like a dramatic like look to the sky as both of them look to each other and super detailed art and it ends and it says Finn. And then we cut back to the studio and Shinpachi's like, we can't have it end like that. That's a terrible ending. <laughs> it seemed like it was going really good at the first part of it and then it kind of like got messed up at the later end. And then Kagura says like, yeah, and there's way too much Shinpachi in it. And then Shipachi goes like, I don't have any issue with that, though. That's okay. <laughs> um, so they said, okay, you know what? Here's an alternate version of it. Uh, so then they play All's Well That Ends Well version, ver alternate version. Um, and in this version, the, it's the same until they get to the meeting between Takatsuji and Gintoki. So they both run towards each other. And when they run towards each other, an Akira-style bomb goes off and completely destroys everything. And then Shinpachi is like, enters into this weird, what I considered at the time was like, he's going into like this weird Evangelion kind of like art style. And then it turns out, like, yes, it is, in fact, a weird, <laughs> it is an Evangelion art style, because they are parodying Evangelion's ending, and they do, uh, <laughs> they start going through the ending of Evangelion, as he starts to wonder, was there no way to really end this? What was my life's purpose? All I wanted to be was a small man who took over his uh, father's dojo. Um, and all this happened, and that's when Kagura, like, in the background is saying, like, 
oh yeah, don't worry about it. No one remembers that that was your original goal. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and so he starts having an idea of, like, maybe this is all everything I was building up towards. Maybe this is all my fault. He goes, like, and then you see, like, a lot of characters. He's talking to, like, all the side characters. They say, like, you're not ready to face death yourself, Shinpachi. You're not ready, Shinpachi, something like that. And then again, it goes to Okita, who says, I have nothing to say. Pass. And then it goes to, <laughs> goes to someone else. And they give him the same line about death. He's like, I don't understand what my ending was supposed to be. What was my purpose? And then Otsu shows up, which is a direct parody of the ending of Neon Genesis Evangelion, where she shows up, and she's also... Um, naked but you only see it from like the shoulder up because that's how it was in evangelion so she's unsimilar because like no shinpachi you did have a character remember when you were super into me everyone loved you when you were into me <laughs> go back to that <laughs> and so he's like you're right and then he like gets up from the chair and he's sitting in the same chair which is again another reference to evangelion and he stands up from the chair and when he stands up from the chair he does he recreates the classic um congratulations ending where he's like on top of a skyscraper and then all the characters from um, Gintama are around him and they start like clapping and saying, congratulations, 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 grats, congratulations. And my favorite part of this bit is actually when they show Hijikata and they show his wife, the wife's face is hidden <laughs> so you can't see. <laughs> you can't see the face at all. Um, and so it ends, and it ends in a similar matter of Evangelion, and it ends. And then once again, Kagura comes up and says, like, that is a dog shit ending. <laughs> That's also bad. There's also still too much Shinpachi. Um, you know what? I got an ending for you. Boom. Here it is. So then we get into All's Well That Ends Well, alternate version 2. And this version, um, after the clash between Takatsuji and Gintoki, what happens is is that Gintoki <laughs> becomes a baseball player and is the new boss of the Shinsengumi. And also Shinpachi died in the final battle. And they show him in the stands. Tay is holding a photo of Shinpachi who has died. He's the only character who died because they also have a bit there where, they're, where um, uh, Katsura is talking to... Um, um, Hasegawa. Oh, I forgot. Also, during the Evangelion bit, when he's looking at all the dead bodies of everyone who died in the final battle, he's seeing all their bodies, and when he goes to look for Hasegawa's bodies, it's just his glasses, and he goes, Hasegawa! <laughs> it's just a broken pair of glasses, and that's all that's left of him. But anyway, um, Hasegawa's talking to Katsura and says, like, hey, how, how are your, um... Uh, how are you doing? It's like, my injuries are fine. I'm just glad that Elizabeth was able to survive by becoming a cyborg. And then they cut to the <laughs> side and Elizabeth <laughs> is fully cyborged up. So the only <laughs> character who died in the final battle was Shinpachi. Um, and as the ending of this one ends, it says death over Shinpachi's face. And then he comes in and he goes like, okay, now this is just terrible. Why? All th when you're doing an ending, it's supposed to be say thin or ending it's not supposed to say deaf what the fuck does that mean <laughs> doesn't mean anything so then they do another alternate version of the alternate version so they do the real alternate version version two and this one um during the battle between takatsuji and gintoki shimpachi is actually like a like a shown in like a uh, protagonist um and he reveals, like, he has to do, like, this, uh, she's also, like, a witch wizard, and she turns into, like, his, like, Sailor Moon, and when he turns into his Sailor Moon outfit, Kagura turns into, like, a rabbit mascot. Gintoki is, um, Mickey Mouse, and Takatsuji, for some reason, is a giant dick, but they don't show it. Um, also, for some reason, instead of having a magical girl stick, he has, like, a magical girl dick stick. It's, it's like, in the shape of a dick, and it's, like, censored at the top, so it's very, it has, like, two balls on it and everything. It's very clearly a dick. Um, and as this ending goes, it goes, like, I'll never see you guys again, but I know, it's basically the ending of Twilight Princess. <laughs> minus the, <laughs> minus the teardrop bit, it's the bit where it's, like, we'll always be friends, even though we're across two different worlds and we'll never see each other again. 
And as they close up on his face, uh, they cut back to the studio where Kagura and Gintoki are both beating the shit out of Shinpachi and saying, like, all your job is to be the straight man. If you start trying to be funny, then what the fuck is our... We don't have a straight man anymore. Cut it out. (laughs) So, that's when finally, at the end, a voice of God starts interrupting them and says, who said that this is the final episode of uh, Gintama? And then out pops up what everyone's expecting. That's right. It's the Shonen Jump thing. Uh, the little pirate guy who's on the cover yeah, of little, every... Little Shonen Jump pirate. Yeah, yeah. He, he's here and he's here to talk to them. And he says, like, who said that you guys were ending? He's like, well, you know, the the economy. He's like, I didn't. we didn't approve that Gintama's ending. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, what you guys are trying to do is that you're trying to end the show... Because you're caught up to the manga, and that means that you're going to have to start making original things, and you're out of ideas. He's like, no, no, man, no, that's not what we're doing. And he goes like, don't try and put, don't try and play this around me, because he told me everything. And then he pulls up Elizabeth, and he goes like, Elizabeth? And he goes like, no. And then they look inside, and he's like, oh no, it's the producer. Which is the <laughs> dude from so many times ago who said, I'm sorry for the quality of Gintama. <laughs> the same dude, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I squealed. And the funniest thing ever is that the Shonen Jump pirate, his arm, is the same as Demon King Piccolo's. <laughs> so he throws him down and goes like, that's not happening. The show's not ending and we're going to continue on, alright? Is everything good here? Is the series ending? And they kind of look and goes like, I guess we are going to have more adventures going forth. And they do like a, yeah, that's right, Kagura uh shinpachi let's go forth and have a lot of adventures and as they walk forward uh shinpachi makes note and says like okay now it kind of feels like we are ending <laughs> like this feel and i was like he's right this is actually the same way they ended bobobo <laughs> with the of, <laughs> of bobobo wasn't able to finish their anime so what they did is that they had all characters run towards the screen <laughs> and say like we're gonna continue on yeah and then they never did any more of that um so, as the, they say, like, I th- this actually kind of feels like the ending. We do a really cool ending montage, which is the past 50 episodes set to the, um, I think it's, uh, not a magic. I think it's the opening for it. I forget if it's the opening or the ending for it, but it actually fits really well as you kind of see all the 50 episodes and all the, like, all the things we watch. I actually felt <laughs> oddly nostalgic watching back the 50 episodes we just watched. I was just like, oh, yeah, man, that did happen this season. That's really cool. <laughs> and uh, it ends with a um, thank you for the support for the three years. Uh, we, everyone here at the staff, really appreciate it and hope to continue to move forward. And it reveals that, like, it's not ending. We're, we have a fourth season. And we will continue on for the foreseeable future. Who would have ever guessed that we would ever have four seasons? <laughs> not us, man. <laughs> Who knew that we made it this far? But we did. And that is episode 150. Um, Holy shit. What do you have to say about this one, Zen? (laughs) I really like the Gintama episodes like this one, where they're just kind of like, yeah, we're we're having fun with ourselves. We're we're liking ourselves. We're life is good, baby. You know, like I, I really enjoy the episodes where they just the vibe with each other. It's like cute. It's wholesome. It's sweet. I'm I'm a fan. Yeah, there there was but, a definite feeling I think of just my like... favorite ending bit was when uh, Shinpachi's on the bus. Yes, and that gets messed up. That one in the bomb. The bomb was really funny, just because obviously the bomb is funny. But yeah, yeah. Uh... It was really well... I thought it was a good way of kind of going... Like, it's a good way of ending, like, a 150 episodes. Like, if you, if I were to think about, like, what does a 150th episode of Gintama kind of look like? It kind of looks like this. And it just kind of fits the overall vibe. And the song choice at the end, when you're kind of seeing, like, all the stuff that's going through... And it's kind of amazing to see all the episodes, all the silly ones, some of the bad ones, and then some of the amazing ones that you kind of watch. And it's all set to this song. And it actually captures the spirit of Gintama really well of like yeah I remember this I remember like the the crazy shit with the Shinsengumi guy and like the emotions of that and then we followed up with some bullshit and it was all it was all worth it in the long journey of Gintama of these 50 episodes it really feels like a yeah there's these 50 episodes man something kind of amazing to see 
Yeah, it's just like I don't know. Gintama in general is just like really good, man. It's hard to, it's hard to not like it, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the, that's because it, it seems so proud of itself. I love these episodes where they're just like, yeah, we fucking rule. We're awesome. Yeah, this weird thing where like almost everyone thinks that we're not gonna make it. We've somehow made it. That's <laughs> that's great, and let's keep on going. Um. It's really cool, and I enjoyed every bit of it here. Um, it's also really funny because I also realized that this is an Evangelion parody, and uh, Hasegawa um, is also the voice actor for Gendo, <laughs> the, the same VA. That's, <laughs> That's why they also kind of look similar, and they do the Gendo pose at one point. It's like, well, it's the same guy. Similar to how when um, uh, the voice actor for Orochimaru does a bit where he's like, she's kind of like Orochimaru, and then in the back... <laughs> Tose does the the Rochimaru head thing. Yeah, <laughs> I really like that. Um, and yeah, I really did like it when they were like walking off towards like the end of saying like, "Hey, let's let's go out there, man. Let's just keep doing this shit. We're out of ideas. We don't know what we're doing. Let's just fucking go. <laughs> we caught up to yeah, our. So we're out of ideas. We have no plan. Let's do it. Let's just go, man. Let's just go. Fuck it, we ball. (laughs) Fuck it, we ball. That's that's the alternate title for this episode. It's like, fuck it, we ball. (laughs) And yeah, it was uh, was amazing. And it was a really fun episode. And it was a really good way of going like, yeah. It made me like, it actually got me back in the spirit of going like, yeah, let's go. Season four, baby. Another (laughs) another 50 episodes to go. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like the thing with... uh... Gintama for me is just like it's so hard not to get attached to like all the characters and all the dumb shit that's going on that I'm always just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Do, every time they because they do these like nostalgia episodes all the time and even though I think for the majority of these episodes I was like wow this sucked ass in my head when this happened I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I remember We're that. We're here for it. Let's yeah, go. I'm here for it. Let's let's go through this. Let's I know go. we Uh-oh. we literally spent like 20, 30 minutes shitting on this arc <laughs> because it's got... absolutely fucking hating it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm here for it. Let's do it. Yeah, when you kind of show it in the montage of saying like, look at all the stuff that we've been through together, man. That's what I'm just like. Yeah, you're right. We have been through a lot, and it's something that I think a decent amount of. I don't think there's many. Sh- I think the only shonen that's still like this is. Like, One Piece, maybe? Because I'm trying to think of, like, Dragon Ball, if ever, if ever, you know, if ever Dragon Ball came back, obviously it would be structured like this, where it's, like, one episode, yeah. next episode, and it would have a huge catalog of episodes. But for the most part, um, new shonen anime are, like, 24 episodes, and then they're kind of done for the season, and then we cut a break, and then we come back. The only one that's doing that crazy kind of scheduling is One Piece, and that's because it's One Piece, and it can get away with doing whatever the fuck One Piece wants. Yeah, One Piece is as One Piece does. Yeah. Really? Yeah, exactly. Oda comes into the screen and goes like, hey, can you think we can maybe 24 tight episodes? And he goes like, hell no, bro! <laughs> Let's go! Old Dragon <laughs> Absolutely Ball! Absolutely fucking not! Let's do it! <laughs> Let's go! Let me show you my main inspiration, Dragon Ball Z. You ever fucking heard of it? I want to be that, but slower. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Five more years. <laughs> As he screams to the animation department, who is overworked. Five more years. <laughs> yeah, most anime is not done like that anymore. And it's hard to kind of like feel that specific feeling that I get from this Gintama where I'm just like, yeah, these 50 episodes, not all of them are great. But when you kind of like go back and you look at them, you're like, yeah, we had a lot of fun time together. I think that's also why a lot of people still go back and see stuff like um, Dragon Ball GT and Dragon Ball Super, which obviously if you actually look at it, the individual parts of it, a lot of people have negative things to say about it. And they're like, you know, it's not the best. It's not that great. But when you look at it as a whole, as an experience, that's different. That's the part where you go like, yeah, man, that would, yeah, man, remember when this happened? Aw, that was so terrible, yeah, but I loved you it. Get, you get that kind of like, yeah, vibe to it. You just, yeah. Yeah. I it's just, a lot easier to see it in hindsight and be like, this fucking rules than yeah. it is otherwise. Yeah, exactly. I think that's, yes, I think that exactly. And I think that it's missing in a lot of stuff. And it's one of the, it's very rare for me to feel those feelings anymore because just stuff isn't built like that anymore. So it's kind of nice it's to really go back. To, it's kind of nice to go back to something that is built like that, and I get that feeling from it. 
So, cool. Good episode. Thumbs up. And now, Zen, it's the time of the show where we talk about what's up next for Shonen Archive. Let's go into it. Any final things to say about the episode before we move on, though, Zen? Uh, no, just uh, always have faith in Gintama to put out something good. If yeah. you're ever like, this is going to be good, and then you're like, oh, man, this is, was not very good, just remember that eventually it's going to be really good. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to appreciate it more. It's like JoJo Part 1. Nobody likes JoJo Part 1 until you get to JoJo Part 2. And you're like, wait, I love everything about all JoJo things. Yeah. No one likes JoJo Part 1, Asterix, except for me and Goresh for some reason. <laughs> Where are the two dudes? I really like it now. The first time I went through it, I was like, yeah. No, I'm I remember good, I that. If, uh, if, if, if I really it, like it now. <laughs> if anyone wants to see some crazy Zen opinions, go back to um, uh, some of the, the, the old stuff we talked about JoJo before you were fully enamored with JoJo. And you can hear some of like the like the oh yeah you know part one kind of sucked did not a big fan of it terrible shit and then that's different from today's end who's like you know what part one pretty cool it's got Neo JoJo pretty good yeah <laughs> exactly it's, it's completely it's different. real hard to get me to dislike anything JoJo related but at the time I was like damn this is JoJo's one of those things you gotta like properly get the vibes for you know yeah you have to experience it you got to go into it which is another reason why probably a lot of people weren't super happy with how they handled the most recent season but that's something we can talk about when we ever we get to jojo <laughs> we can talk about that for when the time comes for uh hopefully netflix doesn't have to handle the next jojo part or maybe it goes to someone who understands maybe releasing stuff a little bit better <laughs> Yeah, yeah. there's a, you know, we'll talk about it when the time comes. But anyway, let's talk about what's next for Shonen Archive. Hopefully, by next week, I'll be able to catch up on Jujutsu Kaisen. And I've already seen the Karako's uh, basketball episodes, but I haven't actually had the time to sit down with it. I think I'm going to have to rewatch them again. Just so, because like I had my thoughts, and I'm like, okay, I have some really good thoughts about this. I'm probably going to have to rewatch those again. <laughs> just so I could remember what my thoughts were. Um... And for Gintama, let's see how it's looking here. For season four, it looks likely that um, the next arc that's big is going to be the Atose arc, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven episodes. I like the uh, angst in your voice as you said that seven. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 I really went back to it. I was like, seven? Really? Okay. We might we might have to break that one up a, a smidge. Yeah, well, we'll uh, I'll ask the people about what they think. Tell us what. Maybe I'll we'll do a separate post in my community stuff and say like, hey, we're going up to Atose. Is it is it a jokey one where it's okay that we cut off in the middle, or is it a a serious one that we should see the entire way through? Um. Because it can kind of go either one way or another with that kind of stuff. I would Either way, we'll figure it out. But if that's the case, depending on how it is, um, it looks like the likely next episode will be 151, 152, 153, 154, 155. And if it is a thing that we have to see the Atose all in one arc, then I'll say 156 is the next episode on there. And then Atose will have its own stuff. And then as we go through more of season... Uh, for we'll figure out the right placement of stuff it looks like there's going to be fairly enough arcs that are going to be like oh yeah five episode arcs and more but it looks like from just a quick glance at it the atose one is maybe the largest one so maybe that's the one where we just have to quickly make a call for it early on and the rest of them i don't see being very much of an issue and yeah that's going to be the plan going forward and hopefully you'll be able to hear this next saturday uh when it comes in uh hopefully i'm not too crazy busy well i actually i do need to still be crazy busy to make money from work that'd be nice but also maybe on the one day i record with zen not so crazy busy where i'm not put into a meeting (laughs) here's hoping it never seems to work out that way but never dude oh my god they don't want to yeah it turns out saying when you say like yeah i'll be a supervisor and then uh you know what's funny when i came back from vegas one of the first things my job did is say uh, that manager that you had, he's gone now. 
um, <laughs> will be taking over what he did. So let's get together. And I'm like, well, he wasn't really doing anything. He was kind of a nice guy. So I'm like, kind of like, that sucks for him. I don't like it when someone loses their job. Uh, if they're a nice person, if they're a bad person, then fuck them. They deserve everything that comes to them. <laughs> but if you're a good person, I don't, I don't feel that way. I was like, that sucks. Um, but also I was just like, okay, I guess I'll just keep on going forward because uh, I was already kind of in charge of my entire department by myself. <laughs> I didn't really need that much help. Just kind of some side stuff. But anyway, I digress. Let's talk about some man stuff, which is where you can find more Zen. If you want to find more Zen, you can go over to his channel, which I have always linked here at the end that you can go check out where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks about the most recent going-ons in uh, Shonen Jump, where he talks, I assume, a lot about domain expansion and a lot of... Why is there a lot of domain expansion going on? Probably not anymore, though. (laughs) Hopefully for another week. (laughs) Maybe slightly less domain expansion going on, since it seems like they're both kind of like... Yeah, well, they have brain damage now, so... I feel that. I feel like that was just an inner talking about how we all felt <laughs> as they kept hitting it. With... <laughs> we hitting them up. With... Everyone's got brain damage. Yeah, we got a hilarious way of going about it. But I was like, you know what? I see the vision now. <laughs> they spammed too hard and got brain damage. Um, and if you want more me stuff, you can always follow my channel uh, on here. Where I do uh, fake Grand Order related things. And then occasionally remember to not do fake Grand Order related things. <laughs> it really kind of depends on my mood on that specific day. But, you know, with all the crazy NeuroFest stuff going on, I've been doing a lot of challenge stuff with my brother. Which has been described as, this is the worst team that I've ever seen. And you know what? We're beating it. So, boom. Our team building, immaculate. <laughs> Our abilities would put together... Next level. You'll never see it from any of the other good uh, Fake Grand Order channels. The better Fake Grand Order channels <laughs> than mine. And yeah, if you want to show, show support for the show, uh, watching is usually enough. You can always comment. Leaving a like is nice because it helps uh, visibility. You never have to worry about it too much on this channel because, like I said, Fake Grand Order is what keeps uh, the channel running and going. And as long as I got that engine back in the backboard... We can do any of this shit right here. Me and Zen can release an hour long of us talking about, like, Sonic OSTs and our favorite. And it wouldn't matter if seven people watch that because I know that the thousands will show up for the important ones. (laughs) Boom. That's the economy. So that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we all going to say goodbye, Zen. So why don't you say goodbye to the people, Zen? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. We'll see you next time. See you guys next time. Peace.